Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. If you saw last week's video, you will have seen all the moulds which I got from Buan Nicole. And there was one mould which I didn't use in that video. I saved it for today. And so today I will be using my lamp mould from Buan Nicole with Aquacast from Elichem Resins to make a beautiful lamp. If that sounds interesting, stay tuned and enjoy the video. Right, here's the mould I'm going to be using today. It's from Buan Nicole and it's a two-part mould because it's got a recess in the front and the back. So because it hasn't got a flat back, it needs to be a two-part mould. And as you can see, they fit together nicely and they've got points where they slot together to make sure they're perfectly in position. And as I said in the introduction, I will be using Aquacast today to make my lamp. I've got 123 grams of water and 350 grams of Aquacast. And I'm just going to give them a really good mix. The pigments I'm going to be using to colour my Aquacast are from Homeware Design and I've chosen Duck Egg Blue and Ocean. I will also be using white, so I need my Aquacast to be in three silicon pots. So once the Aquacast was separated into the three pots, it was time to add the pigments. I just added a few drops of each one and completely combined it into the Aquacast. Then I took my coloured pigments and poured them into the white and just gave it a tiny stir so that I would get a marbled effect. In actual fact, with hindsight, I wish I hadn't mixed it at all once it was in the white and just, you know, done it as a pour straight away rather than mixing it because you couldn't really see the pattern very much in the finished piece. But that's you know, you, you live and you learn, don't you? <laughs> okay, so once it was ready, it was just as simple as pouring it into the mould. With hindsight, I wish I had spent more time banging the sides while it was only partly full. I did get some air pockets trapped in there. I usually give it a really good thorough um, pat on the sides and, you know, the vibrations on the table, which I did do. But it was just not quite enough. And the reason I was reluctant to bang it around too much was because I was avoiding getting it on the top of that middle bit and the sides of the mould where it was going to fit together. I did get some on the top and I had to clean it up. But yeah, I didn't want Aquacast in the places where the top of the mould was going to fit. And so I was a little bit scared of banging it around too much but with hindsight again <laughs> it wouldn't have mattered because you can just wipe it off and at least then I wouldn't have had bubbles trapped in it but there were only a few and it was still fine in the end in my opinion I don't mind one or two bubbles but next time yeah I will be more thorough so once all that was cleaned up I just put the other part of the mold on top I lined up the points where they join together and made sure it was all nicely joined before adding the rest of the aquacast. So there are four holes in the top of the mould and that is for filling up the rest of the mould. You don't need to go to the top of those holes because otherwise you'll have to sand them all away afterwards. So try and get the aquacast just to the point where it reaches the, you know, the bottom of those holes, if that makes sense, without filling the um, apertures and it will be much better. So yeah, I just filled from in each hole a little bit and then gave the table a bang to let it level out a little bit. And then it all, you know, as you can see there, it's leveling out nicely and just added a little bit at a time. It's a really well designed mould, actually, because obviously when you're filling from one hole, you need the air to be able to get out another hole. So having four holes there really makes it easy to fill. And yeah, it's really good. I like it. 
So once I was satisfied that I'd put enough Aquacast in, I left it to cure for about an hour and a half. I'm sorry if you can hear my dog snoring in the background. She sat on my knee while I'm speaking. Uh, yeah, I mentioned in the last video I've got a new puppy and I have to do my video editing and narration while she's sleeping because at the moment she's taking up all of my time. Uh, yeah, she's hard work. As you can see, I'm doing my work there on a puppy pad. Believe me, I've gone through a lot of puppy pads this week. Oh, yeah, <laughs> what a handful. Anyway, yeah, like I said, just finished doing that and then left it for about an hour to an hour and a half and it was ready to demold. So demolding was very easy. It was just as simple as taking off the top. And when you take the top off, you'll see that the aquacast has seeped through the two parts, but it doesn't matter. It just comes off easy. In fact, it just stayed on the mold. Uh, yeah, and then so the lids off, take the main part out of the main body of the mold. And you'll see that I managed to get it nice and flat. I didn't get the, you know, where I'd fill through those holes. Holes. I was a bit bothered that I'd have four lumps to sand away. But actually, it was just about right. And you can see there where there's supposed to be a hole along the middle that there isn't. But that's fine. Just watch what I do. It's easy. And maybe I'm a bit strange, but I found that sound very satisfying. <laughs> so there we have it. I think it looks really pretty. I like the colours. And yeah, so we're ready to do the back of it now. Add the light and the um, cover for the back. Oh, no, actually, saying that, I'm being distracted by puppy um, <laughs> snoring. Before we do that, oh, there's my hearts. So I had some leftover Aquacast. There you go. I use them in that heart mould. I never waste any Aquacast and they'll look really nice when they're sealed. It will really bring the pattern out nicely. So, yeah. Anyway, before I can add the, the light and the back plate to the lamp, I need to sand it. And here I've got my sanding block, which is also from Buan Nicole. It comes with three... Um, sandpapers that stick on with velcro they're really easy so it works best if you wet the sandpaper but i don't like it to be too wet i don't want to get the lamp wet because i've found that if you wet the lamp too much you know if it's not sealed it can dry out and leave marks i just don't like it so i, I just wanted a bit of water i poured it onto my sanding block that wasn't quite enough, so I ended up pouring some onto the puppy pad and just kind of sponging it onto the sanding block. Um, yeah, if I'd have been organised, I would have had a bowl of water there and just used a little bit. But I managed, you do, don't you? You manage, the, you find a way, and that way worked and gave it a little sand. First of all, with the, what was it, 200 grit, I think it is. And then I changed the sandpaper to a 400 grit and then to a 1,000 grit to make it nice and smooth and shiny. And then we were ready for the next step. So I got the mould with the light fitting. When you purchase the mould, you've got the choice of just buying the mould or the mould and the light fitting or just the light fitting. If you want to, you know, if you want to make more and you want more of the light fittings, you can buy them by themselves from um, Buan Nicole. So, yeah, I had the light fittings and this is the back plate that you can see here. And first of all, I just peeled off the protective film from the shiny side, which will be the outside. And then I took my wire and threaded it through the hole. And once it was threaded through, I just moved it all the way down the wire as far as I could so that it was out the way for the next step, which is soldering. This is the part that I was dreading because you know what? I am rubbish at soldering. And those little wires do need to be soldered onto the light strip. <sighs> but I braced myself. I thought, oh no, I'm going to have to film this and I'm rubbish at it. 
but I did it and it was not too bad. Let's have a look. So as you can see, it's already a little bit discolored because <laughs> I'd put the little spots of solder on already and then, yeah, I just put the wires into position and used my soldering iron to melt the solder. Um, I did have to watch the video. When you go to buy your mould, Along with the pictures, there's a little video showing you how to do everything. And it showed you how to do the wires because I didn't know where to put each colour. I've got no idea with all of that. Um, so, yeah, I was being very careful. I know someone's going to tell me off for putting my finger so close to it. But I was very careful. <laughs> didn't burn myself, I promise. And so, yeah, it was the black, then the red and then the white. And then So that's... Like I say, I don't understand how it all works. I just followed the video on the website. And it worked when I plugged it in and the light came on, you know, to check it. Oh, I was so relieved. <laughs> so once the soldering had been done and I breathed a sigh of relief, I added a little bit of double-sided tape to the back, just three pieces, so that I could stick it on to the back plate. So then I just guided the back plate back along the wire because I put it out the way before, didn't I? And the wire was still a bit curled up. So yeah, I <laughs> guided that back and then just stuck the light panel onto the back plate and it was ready to go onto the lamp. So there we go. And I just turned it round, made sure it was central and stuck it on. So the other thing that comes in the lighting pack is this white strip. It's like a diffuser strip. The light is very, very bright. And even with that strip on, I almost found it to be too bright. But anyway, I'm just sticking it into position with plenty of glue from my hot melt glue gun. I have found that hot melt glue isn't the best thing for sticking um onto aquacast it's not brilliant so i did add loads and loads and yeah i thought it would be fine really because it's just on the inside it's not going to be getting knocked around and yeah so it, that that worked fine for that bit i used e6000 glue for adding the back plate because that's a bit stronger and it takes a long a lot longer to dry than the um, hot melt glue and I was being impatient I really wanted to get the back on so I think that really that's why I use the hot melt glue impatience so yeah E6000 works much better with aquacast right so here I've squeezed out a little bit of E6000 glue onto a stirring stick as a palette and I'm just applying it around the edge of the back plate and putting plenty on and then all I needed to do once all that was on was put it into position and allow it to dry overnight and then it was ready. Are you ready to see the final thing? Well, I suppose you've already seen it, haven't you? Because <laughs> I showed you it right at the beginning. But anyway, let's have another look. So here's another look at it in the daylight and as you can see I've got those little air bubbles that I wasn't so happy about but it's still nice isn't it and you can kind of see a bit of a pattern in there. Next time I won't mix up my colours quite so much I did want more of a marble effect. And here it is lit up. Now the light control that comes with it has different settings on it you can have blue light or yellow light i prefer the warm yellow light which you can see here and i've got it on the lowest setting here you can actually have it bright or not too bright it's got a plus, a plus and minus so you can you know change the setting on how bright you want it so that's really handy and yeah i really do like it i think it's a really nice lamp and i'm happy with it what do you think? Let me know in the comments what you think of it and I will put all the links to the products I've used today along with discount codes in the video description and I will see you again next week. Thank you for watching and bye for now.